Hello. Uh, today we're going to be talking about using VI. VI is actually a pretty powerful text editor that's built into most distributions of Linux. Um, a lot of people avoid it because they think it's overly complicated or they're scared of using the command line. But um, in actuality, it's actually pretty powerful once you sort of get used to it. And it does have a fairly steep learning curve, but once you get used to the various commands and that sort of thing, it's pretty easy and a lot simpler than opening up a full word processor um, just to edit a few simple files. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through a few of the basic commands getting used to using VI and some, some of the commands like opening, quitting, adding new text, replacing text, that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot more advanced functionality that's built into VI, a lot more powerful functionality. Um, but for now we're just going to stick with the basics and getting used to using the text editor. So to start in a new uh, command line window, we're going to type VI. And then we're going to open a new file by just typing new file. Um, and what that does is it, it appears here as a blank file because it's a, a new file. We haven't created this one before. If it doesn't exist, VI creates it. Um, if it doesn't exist, it opens it to edit it. But um, new file doesn't exist, so we're going to look at a new file here. Um, to start, VI has two different operating modes. The first mode is a command mode. And in this mode, you can enter various commands like opening, um, saving, quitting, that sort of thing. Uh, it also allows you to open or to enter a different mode called an insertion mode, and that's where you can actually insert and change the text. Uh, so we start out when you first open VI in command mode. Um, so what you need to do now is you're going to enter the insertion mode by typing lowercase i. When you do that, you'll notice that at the very bottom of the screen it changes to insert. Now you can enter text uh, as you please. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to enter some sample text here uh, so that we can play around with it in a minute. And feel free to uh, try this in your own command line. Um, Practice makes perfect, and you're never going to get used to it if you don't practice it. Okay, so now that we have some text, um, we need to talk about the different modes of inserting text. Um, as you notice, I typed I, and what that does is it inserts text before the cursor. Um, there's also an A, which is a lowercase a, and that's going to append text after the cursor. So it really doesn't matter which one you use, but um, it's basically all comes down to where you want the text to be inserted. Now in order to enter a different insertion mode, like if you wanted to enter A, or if you wanted to enter uppercase I, which inserts text before the current line, you need to exit out of the insertion mode back to the command mode by pressing escape. So you press escape, and you'll notice that it returns to command mode. So now, when I type at uppercase I, watch what happens to the cursor. Now you've returned to insert mode, but the cursor returns to the beginning of the line. Now you can enter some text here. And then you can return to command mode by pressing escape. So now, there's a few other inserting uh, commands. We talked about lowercase i, uppercase i, lowercase a. Um, uppercase a appends text after the current line. Now, let's talk about O. If you use a lowercase o, that's going to open a new line after the current line. So if I type O now, a new line starts after the current line. And uppercase O does the same thing, except it adds the line before the current line. So if I were to return to command mode and enter uppercase O, you see that a, a new line has started just below that new one that was previously inserted. So now, um, let's move on a little bit. When you're actually working inside the text, so let's return a command mode here, in, or insertion mode, excuse me. Um, when you're working around, most of the times you'll be able to use the arrow keys to move around. So you can go up, move up and down, that sort of thing. However, um, sometimes you can't do that. You need to use the letter keys. H is going to move left. J moves down. No, I'm sorry, I'm in still in insert mode here. If we're working with... Uh, in command mode here, you can see that H moves to the left, J moves down, K moves up, and L moves to the right. 
If you use a W, that moves to the next word entirely. So you can see that we're skipping entire words here. A capital W is going to move to the next blank a delimited word. A B is going to move to the beginning of the word. So we're, so we're moving backwards here now. An uppercase B is again going to move to the beginning of the delimited word. An E is going to move to the end of the word. An uppercase E moves to the end of the blank delimited word. And we also have parentheses. You can move entire sentences. You can move a sentence back with the left parentheses or a sentence forward. Back, forward. Pretty cool. Um, you can move entire paragraphs with the left and right bracket. A zero is going to move you to the beginning of the line, and a dollar sign is going to move you to the end of the line. Beginning, end. So, those are the basics. There's a lot more commands um, that are involved with moving around text. But we've talked about inserting, we've talked about moving around. Now let's talk about how we remove text. So if you're in insert mode, a lot of times you can press the backspace key. Sometimes that doesn't work. But um, if we're in command mode, most of the delete commands begin with D. So if we enter D, and then we enter, say, a capital X. That's going to remove the character to the left. A lowercase x is going to remove the character to the right. Um, a capital D is going to remove delete to the end of the line, and two Ds in a row are going to delete the entire current line. So there's two Ds, it removes the entire line. Um, that's pretty much the basics. Um, we're also going to talk here in a second about searching and replacing. So searching involves either a slash or a question mark. Uh, a slash is going to search forward. So if we're here and we enter a slash and then we type hi, you can see that it found hi. If we enter a question mark with the same search, it's going to search backwards. So we go to the end and we enter a question mark and then we type in basics. You can see it found basics searching backwards. Um, once it found them, if there's more than one instance, you can use a lowercase n to search for the next instance, or you can use a capital N to search for the previous instance. Replacing is kind of similar, except we're going to enter a colon, and then an s, slash, the word you want to search for, vi, and then another slash, and you're going to enter the string to replace it with. And then you hit enter. And that didn't work because I was at the end. Let's go back to the beginning here and try this again. So now you can see that it changed VI to text. Now if you um, enter a G, that's going to replace all occurrences of that particular pattern. Uh, an AND, and, or excuse me, an ampersand symbol is going to replace or repeat that command. So you can keep pressing uh, the ampersand and that's going to keep replacing the next instance. So that's searching and replacing. Now with searching and replacing, you can also use something called regular expressions. I'm not going to go into that here, but regular, regular expressions are a really powerful command that allows you to essentially search for particular patterns within a string. So you can search for things with uh, a particular amount of spaces or a number of numbers and letters combined. Really powerful. It's almost its entire own language. Um, so you can do a lot of googling on that. There's a lot of regular expression cheat sheets out there um, that you can use within those search and replace strings. So that's pretty much all there is to um, the simple tutorial for um, VI. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Um, you need to actually save and uh, close this. So when you want to save and close, you can enter a colon and then an X, a lowercase x, to exit and save the change that you made to that particular file. Um, or you can enter a colon, a lowercase q, and then an exclamation point, and it's going to ex exit without saving changes. So lowercase x saves changes, lowercase q with an exclamation point exits and does not save changes. So I'm going to save the changes here. And notice that if you put a, um, a lowercase q and then an exclamation point, it does not prompt you 
before exiting. So make sure that's definitely what you want to do. All right, thank you for watching. And um, if you need any more help with VI, there's tons of tutorials online. Just search for VI Cheat Sheet on Google. Um, hopefully you've learned something here. And be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions.